the United States claims to oppose dictatorship and to support democracy around the world, but in Ethiopia it is supporting an armed uprising by the Tigray People's Liberation Front TPLF, against Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's democratically elected government. From 1991 to 2018, the TPLF, a political group that claims to represent less than 6% of Ethiopia's population, controlled the Ethiopian army, security apparatus, and economy. It ruled Ethiopia with an iron fist via a coalition of four ethnic parties that it formed. According to Human Rights Watch. Ethiopia was one of the most inhospitable places in the world, bearing the characteristics of crimes against humanity under TPLF rule. Similarly, the UN says that, when the TPLF was in power, Ethiopia was the second worst jailer of journalists in Africa. The Ethiopian people fought for their freedom, eventually forcing the TPLF to resign in 2018. When the former prime minister resigned in February 2018 amid popular unrest, a power struggle erupted inside the TPLF-dominated government coalition. The TPLF hoped to maintain its dominance and proposed a surrogate, but Abiy Ahmed, the coalition's leader, was selected by representatives of the coalition's two major ethnic groups, the Amharas and the Romos. In April 2018, he was elected prime minister by a huge majority in parliament. Fearing that Abiy Ahmed poses a severe challenge to the TPLF's hegemony over Ethiopia's politics, the TPLF has been fighting him since then. When Abiy Ahmed became prime minister, he implemented political and economic reforms aimed at reducing corruption and privileged access to resources, as well as breaking the TPLF's strong ties to the bureaucracy, army, and intelligence and security agencies. Thousands of prisoners were released, and exiled political organizations were allowed to return to Ethiopia. The political changes were meant to prepare the ground for Ethiopia's democratic transition. Abiy Ahmed outlined a plan to privatize state-owned firms, liberalize key markets, and enable international investment in formerly Ethiopian-only business areas. Although these homegrown economic reforms do not incorporate all of the IMF and World Bank's policy recommendations, they have been endorsed by these institutions and by extension the U.S. government as policies that promote economic growth, improve living standards, and reduce poverty in Ethiopia. Abiy Ahmed approach can be classified as new liberal. The negative stance of the Biden administration toward Ethiopia's government is not based on policy differences. These reforms threaten the political and economic domination of Ethiopia by the TPLF. The TPLF controlled all sectors of Ethiopia's economy through its conglomerate called the Endowment Fund for the Development of Tigray, EFFORT. Although it is illegal in Ethiopia for a political party to own companies, the TPLF owned and managed EFFORT, a business-going concern that it classified as an endowment entity. This enterprise, with a capital value of $3 billion and employees of 47,000 in 2017 was by far the largest business entity in Ethiopia. The TPLF, using its dominant political position, facilitated the transfer of loans from state-owned banks, foreign exchange from the National Bank of Ethiopia, land from the state, and various assets from government ministries and agencies. It enabled effort companies to buy state-owned enterprises at low prices, Employing shabby accounting tricks with the various effort companies, it embezzled a significant amount of resources from the various public institutions. According to a UN report, since the TPLF came to power in Ethiopia in 1991, it embezzled $30 billion and took it out of the country. It has also been reported that loans worth millions of dollars extended to effort companies by the state-owned Commercial Bank of Ethiopia and the Development Bank of Ethiopia were classified as non-performing. In other words, the loans were never paid to the banks. Eritrea is another controversial issue for the TPLF. Abiy Ahmed won the Nobel Peace Prize for signing a peace agreement with Eritrea, ending a 20-year war between the two countries. Although international treaties are signed by national governments, not regional governments, the TPLF opposed the treaty because it believed it should have been included in the discussion, negotiation, and signing of the accord. The Ethiopians and Eritreans as well as the international community backed his internal reforms and Eritrean peace initiative. But the TPLF leaders, convinced that power had slipped away for good, fearful that their domination was in danger, and worried that they may face justice for the crimes they had committed while in power, chose to oppose the current president's reformist agenda right from the outset. The Ethiopian government alleges the former head of intelligence, Jedichu Asifa, a prominent member of the TPLF, organized the assassination attempt on Abiy Ahmed on June 23, 2018, just three months after Abiy Ahmed was sworn in as prime minister. The TPLF engaged in a number of disruptive, controversial, and subversive operations between 2018 and 2020. It retreated to Mikkel, Tigray's capital, after withdrawing from the coalition government. 
In Mikkel, the TPLF obstructed federal police from serving court orders on accused former TPLF officers. It made it impossible for Ethiopia's central government to transport military equipment from Tigray to other parts of the country. It held military parades, declared Tigray a de facto state, and threatened to break Tigray's ties with Ethiopia. The TPLF held regional elections in Tigray in September 2020, in defiance of the Ethiopian parliament, in violation of the constitution, and claimed to have won 98% of the votes. In October 2020, the TPLF rejected the new commanders of the Northern Command, appointed by the central government, to oversee the military bases located in Tigray, and issued a statement that said, leadership changes and command reorganizations and the movement of troops or armaments are unacceptable and will never be implemented. Most importantly, the TPLF moved to overthrow the Ethiopian government through an armed insurrection and attacked the Northern Command bases in Tigray on November 4, 2020. Once the war started, the TPLF launched rockets on Asmara, the capital of Eritrea on November 10 and 27, 2020. The Ethiopian government, supported by the Eritrean army and regional paramilitary forces, responded to the attacks decisively, removing the TPLF from power in Tigray, but facing resistance from the Tigrayan population and pressure from the US, the EU, and other Western governments. The government withdrew from Tigray in June 2021. The government says that it withdrew its army from Tigray for humanitarian reasons, while the TPLF maintains that it kicked out the army from Tigray. The TPLF regained control of Tigray and expanded the conflict beyond Tigray, with the aim of overthrowing the government as it had originally planned. Beginning from June of this year, the TPLF has invaded the neighboring regions of Amhara and Afar, where it has destroyed schools, hospitals, churches, mosques, and killed hundreds of civilians. According to a USAID official in Addis Ababa, in every town they have gone into, they looted the warehouses, they have looted trucks, and they have caused a great deal of destruction in all the villages they have visited. The TPLF has burned down homes of farmers in the Amhara region. The TPLF is now threatening to overrun the capital of Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, but due to the war crimes the TPLF has committed in the areas it has invaded, the local population is fighting back the TPLF. The TPLF has overextended itself as well. The TPLF, facing stiff resistance from the population, shortages of military supplies, and war fatigue from the people of Tigray, cannot sustain the war for long, although it may continue the conflict with sustained guerrilla attacks. It is a matter of time before the TPLF is forced to withdraw from the Amhara and Afar regions, let alone enter Addis Ababa. The Biden administration officials, particularly those in the U.S. State Department, are well aware of the nature of the conflict between the Ethiopian government and the TPLF. Hyber Peter Nagy, the U.S. Assistant Secretary for African Affairs and former U.S. Ambassador to Ethiopia under the Trump administration says. It seems like the TPLF were doing this more to depose the prime minister from power and to reassert themselves into the prominent position that they had atop the Ethiopian political spectrum for the last 27 years. Despite the fact that the U.S. administration is well aware of the TPLF's authoritarian past and current political ambitions, it has decided to diplomatically and politically back the TPLF by seeking a negotiated settlement in the hopes of achieving a power-sharing agreement with the TPLF. The U.S. aims to overthrow Ethiopia's government and impose a dictatorial government led by the TPLF, but most Ethiopians are fiercely opposed to the TPLF's return to power. Six months ago, the White House invited veteran Ethiopian politicians, some of whom have served time in jail for corruption, to a meeting to form a transitional government in Ethiopia. The meeting failed to achieve its objective because the politicians could not agree among themselves on the future direction of Ethiopia. Subsequently, the postponed election took place on June 23 in which the Prime Minister's Prosperity Party won a landslide victory, firmly establishing him as the democratically elected leader of Ethiopia. In Washington, though, the operation to depose Abiy Ahmed's government is still underway. With much excitement from some Western media outlets, nine political groupings signed an agreement with the TPLF in Washington on November 5 to form a transitional government, most likely with the support, coordination, and facilitation of the White House. The scheme was staged as a political show to put pressure on Ethiopia's leadership, but it will have no lasting political consequences. The group excludes Ethiopia's two largest ethnic groups, the Amharas and Oromos, who together account for more than 60% of the country's population, it has little internal support. And its political agenda of forming an ethnic confederation is an untenable political project that most Ethiopians reject.
the Biden administration began giving orders to Ethiopia's government almost immediately after taking office. The Ethiopian government was told by Antony Blinken on February 27, 2021, to evacuate Eritrean troops and the Amhara militia from Tigray immediately. According to a State Department official, he reaffirmed the demand on March 2 during a phone conversation with Abiy Ahmed. On March 12, Blinken met with UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres and spoke before the House Foreign Affairs Committee, repeating his requests. In May, he asked that the interim government in Tigray administer the western portion of the country, despite the historical circumstances under which this region was integrated into Tigray. In addition to issuing orders on troop withdrawal from Tigray and the keeping of Tigray's territory unchanged, the U.S. has also demanded that the Ethiopian government provide unfettered access to humanitarian aid for the people of Tigray and ethnic cleansing in Tigray, establish an independent, international, and credible inquiry into the abuse of human rights in Tigray unilaterally end all hostilities, pursue a negotiated settlement to the armed conflict, and include all parties in the political process. The Ethiopian government has accepted most of these demands by the Biden administration, and yet the U.S. pressure continues. On May 24, the United States put travel restrictions on Ethiopian officials accused of human rights violations. President Biden signed an executive order on September 17, 2021, enabling the Treasury Department to implement economic sanctions against targeted government officials, citing Ethiopia as a national security threat to the United States. Ethiopia neither has the capability nor the will to jeopardize U.S. national security in the United States or anywhere else in the entire planet. The president's claim that Ethiopia constitutes a national security threat to the United States is a complete fabrication intended to excuse his administration's actions. The Biden administration claims to support democracy, peace, and national unity in Ethiopia. The reality is the opposite. The U.S. government is threatening the territorial integrity and stability of Ethiopia by supporting the separatist terrorist-designated TPLF that has vowed to dismantle the Ethiopian state, to destroy the Ethiopian army, and to break up Ethiopia. The Ethiopian people see the Biden administration's hypocrisy and disingenuity. The White House is withholding $272 million in security and development aid appropriated by Congress for Ethiopia. On November 2, Biden threatened to withdraw Ethiopia's duty-free access to the U.S. market under the African Growth and Opportunity Act, AGOA, at a time when the TPLF was claiming that it was ready to march on Addis Ababa. The removal of Ethiopia from AGOA, while inflicting considerable harm on thousands of workers, farmers, and their families, would have little impact on the Ethiopian government's resolve to fight the TPLF. Despite the State Department's familiarity with the TPLF's history and its motivation in instigating, prolonging, and escalating the armed conflict, why has the Biden administration taken a strong stand against the Ethiopian government? Three major factors explain the Biden administration's belligerent attitude towards the Ethiopian government. The historical alliance between the U.S. and the TPLF, the Biden administration's desire to project to the world that the U.S. is a shining city on the hill. And the Abiy Ahmed government's refusal to obey U.S. orders. The U.S. has had a close relationship with the TPLF, especially with the Democratic Party, since the late 1980s, when the TPLF was engaged in guerrilla warfare against the military government in Ethiopia. The U.S. played a key role in imposing the TPLF on the Ethiopian people in 1991. Once the TPLF came to power, the alliance between the TPLF and the U.S., under both Republican and Democratic administrations, flourished, despite the TPLF's egregious violations of human rights in Ethiopia. The TPLF-controlled government received billions of dollars in U.S. foreign aid. President Obama declared that the 2015 election was democratic, an election in which the coalition of ethnic parties controlled by the TPLF won 100 percent of the parliamentary seats. In return for U.S. diplomatic, economic, and political support for the TPLF, the TPLF became an obedient executor of U.S. foreign policy in Eritrea, Somalia, South Sudan, Sudan, and other African countries. The TPLF was a reliable, subservient, subordinate partner for the U.S. Ethiopia, one of the least developed and highly foreign aid-dependent countries, is vulnerable to economic, diplomatic, and political pressure from aid donors. Ethiopia receives the second-highest amount of U.S. foreign aid in Africa, next to Egypt, in absolute terms. Ethiopia receives less aid per capita than many other African countries. Ethiopia received $923 million in help from the United States in 2019, the majority of which was humanitarian aid. Ethiopia also received significant assistance from the European Union, the United Kingdom, and other Western nations. 
Ethiopia has also taken out large loans from the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and private Western financial organizations. Further Ethiopia relies heavily on foreign aid for its budget, rendering it highly susceptible to pressure from aid donors like the US. About one-third of Ethiopia's budget is financed by foreign aid. Ethiopia's vulnerability is considerable, and it is this leverage that the Biden administration has exploited to pressure, undermine, and threaten the democratically elected government of Ethiopia. Samantha Power, the current administrator of USAID, in the same way that she advocated for bombing Libya, Syria, and Yugoslavia in the name of defending human rights, she is now threatening Ethiopia by saying that all options are on the table unless Ethiopia negotiates with the TPLF. She has repeatedly condemned the Ethiopian government for human rights violations and ethnic cleansing in Tigray, while remaining silent on the TPLF's war crimes in the Amhara and Afar regions. Behind the Biden administration's supposed worries about human rights lies Abiy Ahmed's refusal to obey U.S. imperial orders on several important issues of concern for the U.S. administration, one of those is for Ethiopia to accept Egypt's demands regarding the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam that Ethiopia is building on the Blue Nile, reducing Ethiopia's strong economic ties with China and sharing power with the TPLF. Egypt and Ethiopia have a dispute over the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, which, when completed will be the largest dam in Africa. Egypt is primarily concerned about how the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam and Ethiopia's plan for its water resource development in the Nile Basin would affect Egypt's access to the waters of the Blue Nile. Egypt has demanded that Ethiopia guarantee water supply, especially during extended drought periods, and that Ethiopia sign a binding agreement not to undertake any type of water resource development that would reduce the flow of water to Egypt from the Blue Nile. The Ethiopian government maintains that it understands these concerns and is willing to discuss, but will not allow a foreign government to dictate its national policy on water management and economic development. Negotiations are ongoing, but the U.S. government, starting with the Trump administration, has backed Egypt's position and insists that Ethiopia meet Egypt's demands. Egypt is regarded as a strategic ally by the United States in the Middle East. Ethiopia has rejected the United States' demand to accommodate Egypt's request because it jeopardizes Ethiopia's economic development. Ethiopia has become a pawn in the United States' Middle East policy. The Biden administration, as is well known, is concerned about China's rise as a rival superpower and its influence in Africa, including Ethiopia. China has been active in infrastructure development in Ethiopia, as it has elsewhere in Africa, since the 2000s. Ethiopia is one of the countries involved in China's Belt and Road Initiative, in which China has funded and built a vast network of railways and highways in Ethiopia. Since the early 2000s, China has been more economically influential in Ethiopia than the United States. China is now Ethiopia's largest importer of goods and services, with the United States coming in third. China accounts for 60% of Ethiopia's foreign direct investment. Between 2000 and 2018, China loaned Ethiopia $13.7 billion and the United States $9.2 billion. The majority of China's loans to Ethiopia have gone toward infrastructure development, whereas the majority of U.S. loans have gone toward the health and education sectors. China's involvement in Ethiopia is more visible to the Ethiopian public than that of America's. Chinese investment in Ethiopia is much higher than U.S. investment, there are many more Chinese businesspeople, engineers, investors, and even ordinary workers who are involved in the economic transformation of Ethiopia than Americans. China's extensive influence in Ethiopia has worried the Biden administration. According to an Ethiopian government official, the U.S. has demanded that the Ethiopian government reduce its economic ties with China in a futile attempt to reduce China's growing influence in Ethiopia and the rest of the African continent. Given China's rising economic, military, and political power in the world, the Ethiopian government is justified in rejecting the United States' demand that Ethiopia cut economic ties with China. Ethiopia, like most African countries, wants to maintain good relations with both the US and China in order to reap the most benefits from the two major economic powers. It is not in Ethiopia's best interests to cut economic ties with China or become more reliant on the U.S., but the Biden administration's attempt to undermine the Ethiopian government has brought Ethiopia closer to China than ever before. The Biden administration insists that the Ethiopian government negotiate with the TPLF on an equal basis, but the Ethiopian government contends that it cannot negotiate with a terrorist organization that is engaged in the violent overthrow of the democratically elected government and is committed to the destruction of Ethiopia.
the Ethiopian government maintains that it is within its sovereign right to decide with which political party it can negotiate. The US has no business in insisting that the Ethiopian government negotiate with the TPLF any more than China has the right to tell the US government that it should negotiate with the Proud Boy. The refusal of the Ethiopian government to heed U.S. demands has angered the Biden administration. Its diplomatic maneuvers in Africa, the EU, the UN, and among its allies, its punitive measures, and its incessant threats against the Ethiopian government is nothing but retaliation for disobedience and has little to do with human rights violations in Ethiopia. The U.S. has been conspicuously silent on the TPLF's war crimes. If the Biden administration was truly concerned about human rights violations in Ethiopia, it would have condemned the TPLF's war crimes in the Amhara and the Far regions, but the US is tolerating TPLF human rights abuses in the same way that it has always tolerated abuses by its developing country allies. Many Ethiopians believe that the US is ethnically biased and that its elective condemnation of human rights violations in Ethiopia rings hollow and exposes its true motivation, punishment for disobedience. Just as the U.S. destabilized Libya by intervening militarily and supporting Saudi Arabia's military adventure in Yemen, the Biden administration appears determined to destabilize Ethiopia by supporting the TPLF, regardless of the negative consequences of its misguided policy for Ethiopia. The Horn of Africa and even the U.S. long-term strategic interests in the region. The Biden administration appears to have failed to learn from the United States' mistakes in Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, and Syria, and appears poised to repeat the same error in Ethiopia. By supporting the TPLF, the Biden administration has alienated the majority of the Ethiopian people, both in Ethiopia and in the diaspora. In Ethiopia, the favorable public opinion towards the US is the lowest it has ever been, but by contrast, support for China has reached its highest level, primarily because of China's refusal to impose economic and military sanctions on Ethiopia by the UN Security Council, as proposed by the US and its allies. The US government should realize that the Ethiopian people will not allow the TPLF to come to power again on its own or as a member of a transitional government. The US should note that the millions of people are currently demonstrating against the TPLF throughout Ethiopia. The US attempt to impose the TPLF on the people of Ethiopia once again, in one form or another, is an anti-democratic fruitless exercise. US support for the TPLF can only prolong the destruction, the bloodshed, and the suffering of innocent Ethiopians, while damaging the international reputation of the US as a defender of democracy. The sooner the US realizes this fact, the better it is for all concerned. As for the American-European allies, they should remember what of the Syria and Libya refugees crisis brought upon the political landscape of Western Europe, unless Europe wants to see more than 2 million Ethiopian refugees coming to European shores. They should advise their American master to be cautious with the Ethiopia situation. A refugee crisis in Western Europe caused by America's political ambitions in Africa may result in a Europe more populous than ever and growing anti-immigrant sentiment, which may cause political uncertainty and social unrest in the European Union. 